Hi everyone, Mature Simmer here. Welcome. I'm sure you're wondering where we are. We're on a map tour. And this is the starting point for Elk Mountain, Wyoming. So let's get going. So this map requires a lot of other additional mods that come with it. So I just want to make sure you know what they are so that you can make sure you have them marked off. I'm not going to mention the things that I just have in normally in my map testing, just the ones that you need to focus on. EMR Sawmill, OKU's Dealership, the Ranch Set, the Ranch Set Extension, the Ranch Workshop, the Rustic Cow Barn. Those are the only mods that come with it, but to make the map appear properly with the buildings in the correct locations and obviously there at all, you need those. So I'm going to do this a little bit differently. We're going to hop into the truck here. So before we take off, you know, let's walk over here to the campsite. This map does have some unique features, one of which is these elk antler collectibles. So we're going to grab that. And there's a total of 15 collectibles on the map, 12 elk antlers and three others. So I'm going to do something I don't normally do, which is try to drive and talk at the same time. The reason for that is obviously we're up here on the mountain and we need to get ourselves back down to the ranch. So consider this part of the driving tour. So uh, it's a little bit of a ways to get back to the main road and obviously we've got some ridges here we need to be careful of. But while we're going I'm gonna go ahead and share with you what the map author, Elk Mountain Modding, had to tell us about this map. Hello everyone. So after a long process and a ton of hours, I'm happy to present to you Elk Mountain, Wyoming in FS22. It's a 4X map and at the moment is only for PC. So I don't know if that means they're going to go ahead and try to do something. Ah, oh, there was a rock there. I didn't see that. Um, if they're going to try to make it console capable or not. It is a large river valley with mountains on one side and the other side large open high plains. The map gives you the opportunity to do just about anything that FS22 has to offer. From farming in the river valley, I just got to be careful here, and the high plains, logging in the densely forested mountains, and mining across the map. It has 10 predetermined fields, so there aren't a lot on here, custom environment, and a custom crop calendar. I love the Elm Creek barns, except for the fact that you can't go in them, so I've taken some of them into Blender and given them interiors and working doors. There are two files that you have to download. One is the map and the separate buildings pack. The link I'm going to provide you at the bottom goes to a location that actually gives you the map and the pack together but uh, there are other sites I've found that actually don't make them both available or at least they weren't easy to find. So I'd suggest if you're looking to do this to use the link that I put down below so that you can get kind of the combination pack that includes both the buildings and the map itself. So the building plaque, which includes the EMR sawmill and the OK used mods dealership that has been updated for FS22. You have to unzip the buildings pack and drag them into your mods folder. Most of the ranch buildings will only show up if you're on new farmer mode. So keep that in mind. So a lot of what you're going to see, we're on new farmer mode here in this tour. And that's what I'll be showing you. So, as you can see, it's a little tricky to get down here by the mountain. There are four other farm locations on the map with the Elm Creek barns, but none of the doors will work until you purchase the parcel. After, also after you purchase the land, you can take down the realty signs by walking to them and deactivating them. So I'll show you how that works because that is kind of a cool feature of the map as well. Uh, just, you know, pretty nice for role play or anything that you're doing like that. And as I did mention, there are 12 elk antler collectibles on the map. I also added three new collectibles. 
There are a few extra map fill types added for future production opportunity. And then he gives a special thanks to several people for uh, including Realistic Gaming Crew for allowing me to use their mining assets from the map Yukon Valley. Uh, da -da 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 -da, just making sure I think this is the last major part of the switchback here. Uh, also a big thanks for allowing uh, Haggis and the Farmers Only Club to allow them to use the custom crop calendar from their map Hobo's Hollow. So we will definitely be taking a look at the crop calendar as well. And then they have a long list of people who were doing uh, private testing, support, and uh, early previews and so forth. So I know there's been plenty of stuff on this map out there, but definitely wanted to take a look at it myself and just give you my perspective um, for those who have come to appreciate kind of the way I come at map tours, map reviews, and so forth. So that's basically what they tell us about where we're at. And so we're finally back onto some real roads, which is kind of what I was hoping, that I could get through that and at least make it a little more interesting rather than just sitting around uh, like I tend to do on most maps because we're already either at the store or whatever. But the first thing you'll probably notice is just how different this map looks from most FS22 maps, besides from the fact that we've got mountains, tons of mountains, just terrain. Um, but you can see just even from the edges, like as we've been turning, as we've been driving down the mountain, although I know I was kind of at a high, high angle to be able to tell where I was driving, so maybe you were seeing more of my truck there. But anywhere we look on the horizon we've got some pretty cool surrounding space so we've got mountains and then as they said you know a little bit of the high plains out that way I'm thinking but this road here is how we get to our farm and you've got some of those sounds I'm not that familiar with all kinds of animals so I couldn't tell you what that is. Hop back in our truck and you can see Elk Mountain Ranch. So pretty nice, pretty nice. So heading on over the bridge here. Real nice stream and yeah what you'll notice in this map is there's just everywhere you look there's something to look at. You've got that little wagon wheel and post the entrance to our farm. We've got all those buildings that we talked about with the mods that you download that help flesh things out. So we've got some barns here with equipment. One of the other things that I really like that Elk Mountain Modding did here is trigger points are not visible until you get nearby. So as I zoom in here, you can see the trigger points appear. And then as I pull away, they go away. So from a visibility standpoint, it's just a very clean, clean setup. I like the fact, um, you know, the equipment's here. The equipment's in a state of kind of looking like it's been used. So if we get out here and run over, you can see, you know, we've got some mowers, tether, not terribly clean, the baler, you know, you can obviously take them out, clean them up. Um, you know, but as I said, as we kind of get near things, you know, the, the pastures or the animal enclosures, the icons will appear as we get a little bit closer and can interact with them. So you can see the water fill point there. Um, I believe that's the emptying point because this looks like, yeah, it looks like a milking station. So this will be the cow barn. 
You've got the truck to transport your livestock. A couple of silos with an auger. So from a perspective of just a real believable, immersive looking type of farm, um, you know, we've definitely got ourselves something pretty special here in what Elk Mountain Modding has provided. Uh, so we've got some sheds with some more equipment here. Uh, windrower, pretty sure. And then uh, obviously a spreader, a trailer, a header. And then we've got a cultivator and yeah, either a plow and a cedar. We'll take a look when we look at the starting equipment. So now we're back around the other side. We've got a horse trailer there, so that's our horse pasture. Uh, you know, and once again, as we were at the appropriate spots, we'd get some, some points to trigger with. Nice old tractor. Maybe it's our granddaddy's tractor that's out here amongst the flowers and nicely landscaped area under that tree. And if you've ever done any of Elk Mountain Mod's things, here's the familiar house. So let's get on out of the truck and let's head on in there. So you can see here, you know, very nice living room, very nice living space. And then you've got your sleep trigger up here. And can work on your computer there if you need to. Looks like they're looking at some farm equipment. And then in the bathroom, if you want to change clothes, where else would you do it? It's your bathroom, uh, since your bedroom's kind of out in the loft here. Give yourself a little bit of privacy, and you can do that. So, pretty nice kitchen. Looks like granite countertops. Nice professional cook stove with six burners. Pretty, pretty nice. Oh, somebody just made some pizza. Looks awesome. All right. So that gives you at least a layout of the buildings on the starting farm. Not quite making it. There we go. Make it through the door there. So, not sure. Yeah, we can turn the lights on. Oh, we've got another little wagon, an old trailer here. So just really, really well, well done from an, like I said, an immersion and landscape standpoint. Just definitely gives you, uh, you know, that ability. So there you go. The water appeared as we got a little closer. We've got our greenhouse here. Head on in. Whoops. A little bit of the FS physics there, so greenhouses for tomatoes, lettuce, strawberries. So again, the different mixtures, pretty standard stuff if you worked with uh, the greenhouses in FS22 before. But you've got that available here. And, you know, some outdoor growing space with that as well. Alright, a little bit of a unique storage shed there, where you've got one area that's covered, and obviously another that'll uh, let you do some things. I'm not quite sure. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, as I look at the help menu here, Sell wood. So this is a wool, a wood sell point. So like a wood chipper, I guess, uh, right on the location. So you can bring your wood here and sell it directly. So that's pretty nice. And obviously you've got some trees around. So let's start going through the normal things we look at now that we're done gawking at the beauty of the map. 
just getting here and, and looking around. So let's go into the PDA. All right, so here's the PDA. Again, as you can see, is what you'll find everything with this map, quite unique. Um, it's a topographical map where you can see the topo lines with the different elevation. Um, you know, Elk Mountain was what we were on. And then we took this road down and came down this way and then came around. So to just give you some perspective of what we looked at. Keep in mind this is a 4x map. So while we drove quite a ways, you can see we really did, you know, this segment of six squares maybe. You know, if we're looking at these squares in the background on the map. So as mentioned, you can see 10 fields down here kind of in the valley near the river. Uh, we own number one, one of those, and the rest of the map is kind of open to expansion. So my initial observation here certainly is uh, this may be more appropriate as a single player map. It's going to be a bit of a challenge just because of the number of fields and also the fact that many other things here are at least up here are mountainous so while you can you know purchase these areas the question you're, you're not going to be putting a lot of fields in there uh, but when we go down here and take a look at the high plains we'll see you know maybe these elevation points aren't as substantial and you're able to to do some things there so if we flip over to farmland mode you can see this is our parcel so we do, do have field one we also have some space here, so we'll take a look at that uh, when we start driving the map a bit, because the other thing that we definitely want to go take a look at is all these unique features that they have included on the map. The Burn Ridge, Bighorn Mine, Clear Cut Area, Bighorn Lake. Uh, obviously we talked about getting down to the High Plains. There's the Gravel Pit down here. So there's just all kinds of things to identify and explore. So the blue lines, you know, the red line, the orange lines, those are roads that we can use. So just to give you a little bit of perspective, from the cost standpoint on the fields, you can see, okay, field three here. Again, with the way it works, I've got to click out before I can see the acreage. So 20 acres. 66,000, 23 acres, 74,000. Our parcel, just a bit over 100,000. Twos, 106, tens, 83,000, nines, 55. Nice thing is, all these fields are, are purchasable individually. They don't come in packs, so even this little 5.86 acre circular field here for less than 20,000 you can just pick that up you're not required to you know buy seven with it if you don't want it so the largest field almost 200,000 but then as I said they've got the map divided and it's a little harder to see but these white lines here are kind of how things are divided so you can see you've got 80 acres so you can buy all of the whoops you can buy all of the map if you'd like. Um, every inch of it that I've been able to see, uh, you know, other than obviously the river and the roads, is purchasable. So, um, you know, you can buy the mine, you can buy the burn ridge, you can buy part of the clear cut, uh, you know, half of the lake, the other half of the lake. Obviously, if you're doing things up here, you're likely going to be doing timber and you're going to have to figure out how to get equipment in there because as you saw on the ride down from Elk Mountain um, this is not a map with slight elevation changes so you're going to need some pretty hardy equipment to get yourself up there. So before we leave the map let's take a look at the points on it. You know, Directly in our farm as we said we've got a, a uh, it says ranch barn, but I believe it's got a cow icon. That's the horse pasture and so forth. So out here we have an oil mill. We have a cereal factory. Over in this space, we've got seed fert, Wyoming grain. We've got a bin. 
water storage tank so you can see if we zoom in farm 5 this is one of the farm locations that he talked about we are I assume farm 1 farm 2 is here farm 4 is here let's go ahead and change that alright so farm 4 would buy that in the field farm 2 would just give you some land in the elbow of the river farm 5 includes a large portion of some mountain space here and then farm 3 is just this little segment here that doesn't include any fields specifically with it and it looks like we've got muddy gap that we're in with that farm so again one two three four those are your other farm locations so they're all basically uh, along route 242 at least most of them are obviously ourselves and farm two are on this spur road that goes off and obviously then connects through muddy gap that we'll take a look at when we go driving around so back here so we buy hay I'm pretty sure you can probably figure out what we sell there uh, the animal dealers located here at the Northwest Stockyard you can see the feed store there's the fairgrounds over here off the main road lime and seed so here's the Clearwater co-op which includes the grain mill and the main town itself so here we've got a sugar mill carpentry there's the dealership fast food restaurant tailor shop bakery farmers market a pawn shop a local market there's the vehicle shop um, seed fert lime as well spinnery farmers market and a gas station and we've got a biomass heating plant and here we've got the sawmill there's a train oh right on time look at that so you can rent the train that just comes in and out of town and so there's a, a grain west silo and uh, it looks like and then the train to Cheyenne and grain west Shy uh, silo so I'm assuming Cheyenne's out that way so that gives you a little bit of perspective and yeah we started with these and then of course the muddy gap has got all of that inform all those items there so remember the farms with things on them until you buy the land you're not able to interact with the buildings all right so the next thing they talked about was the custom crop calendar which they're using from hobo's hollow you can see larger planting and harvesting windows instead of just always two months and two months you've got basically three months and three months uh, wheat gives you a few options so you can basically kind of put in winter wheat and you still can't harvest it till the summer but gives you some options there and you can see the crop types are the basic crop types that you'd expect that come with FS 22 but you've got some other choices as far as when you plant them and what you do with them so for the ability to sell things we've obviously looked at a lot of these but we can see if we got six you know even more for oats because obviously those are going to go to the cereal factory and some of the production buildings will buy some of these just like for the canola you can make canola oil sorghum grapes olives um, everything's got various options we'll just as always scroll through these so you've got three places to buy seeds you can sell your eggs your wool your milk at many locations so definitely the largest number of options I've seen on any mod map that I've looked at so far uh, so the outdoor wood boiler for the ranch uh, it kind of overlays this a bit but it looks like it's 130 so right now it's one of the more profitable places to get rid of wood chips silage wood itself can also go to the wood boiler and you can see it looks like 3000 something maybe 87 or 07 grass hay straw uh, they're buying diesel which is interesting so um okay for productions 
got many, many points. So, so far, some of them just have two, but still, that's not bad. Okay, close, just have the local market. Cereal, also just the local market. Tons of places for your oil. Raisins, grape juice, all the uh, greenhouse items that we looked at. Many places for those. You can only get chocolate there. Furniture, same thing. All right, so it doesn't look like you can buy liquid furt. You can just work with solid furt on the map. Uh, you've got lime. Also can't buy herbicide. There's a debris crusher for stones. All right, and you've also got some, because of the Yukon mining changes, these items appear that allow you to dig things out, which I assume would be in the large mine. I'm not going to show anything specific on that other than visit that space, but you can see you've got many things here including you know gold and and so forth. So um, again I think if you buy the mine you're going to unlock the ability to use things to make these. Alright, so for our starting equipment uh, as we saw as we went around, we have a lot of things, but I'm sure we've missed a few. So we have those couple augers that were near the silos, the standard ones in the game. We've got a bucket front loader, obviously the arm. Um, we've got the two animal trailers we saw, so this one will move a good amount. 12 cows, 36 pigs, 38 uh, sheep. And this one obviously is for two horses be able to get some water to the animals. So we've got a 6,000 liter water trailer. We've got a couple balers, round, uh, adjustable size, and a square. The wind rower that we saw, uh, 8.4 meters. Tether, 9 meters. The side mower, front mower combination, so 3 meters and then 8.3, so basically 12 meter width. And you've got your 12 meter breed all spreader, which I think can be expanded. 8 meter, 3100 liter cedar. Doesn't fertilize, and then almost an 8 meter, 7.5 meter cultivator. 6 meter header, the Deutsch Far Harvester. Uh, again, the common starting one for a lot of the maps because that's the base game setup. 18,500 uh, trailer load or 18,500 liter trailer. The pickup we obviously were working with, we've got that Mac that's near the larger animal trailer on the far side of the yard and then we've got ourselves a 388 horsepower John Deere. All right, so just like anything in Wyoming, everything's kind of big. So I drove down here instead of walking down here. There's our harvester. Looks like we've got potentially yep, a workshop here, so we'll be able to repair things directly in here. Um, it's a little bit of a challenge to pull through, but it looks like that's lined up pretty well. So you should be able to just pull through the shop here and work on things. Alright, so this is our cow barn here, the ranch barn as we talked about. Alright, so I'm over here by the horse barn. I was trying to figure out where our tractor is, but this is where it is placed. So it's got the front loader and the shovel on it. Obviously we can't get out this way with it, um, but you'd be able to pull out through the back end there. And all the other equipment I think we've seen stored around the yard. So you've got a couple more bays here to store things if you'd like to use those. A little bit of a mushroom problem here. Alright, so I'm just really enjoying the view. Um, it's, it's really, really, really a beautiful ranch. So I'm going to do things a little differently than I do on some of the other map tours where I would normally now be doing a flying tour. I'm going to actually drive the map first. Um, because I want the experience of kind of discovering these unique locations as we 
come upon them the way you normally would in the regular gameplay, rather than seeing them overhead, and then we might just do kind of a quick flyover at the end to take a look. So, if we recall from the PDA, we basically have mountains up north and the high plains down south. So I love this split rail fence as well, which is just a really, really nice feature. So this will start taking us down to some of these fields that we have here. So that's number three, the round field. And then I think four is in the back there, up near the mountain. We've got the cattle grates, so that the cattle don't wander away. Alright, so this here is farm two. So you can see we've got a for sale sign here. So, um, you know, pretty base setup, you know, and as it said, obviously we're not going to be able to interact with any of these buildings, but you can see there is some storage here. There's a silo setup of some sort. And then more importantly, you've got this space down here that's in the elbow of the river that you could turn into a workable field. Depending on how large you wanted it, you might need to do some logging and take out some trees. But you've got a, a little bit of space to work with here, so certainly not the size of the ranch that you get in new farmer mode, but something definitely you know, worthwhile. Alright, so just checking out the buildings and so forth, you are able to, you know, click on them and, you know, I'm assuming once you own them, you can remove them. Okay, so back to our main ranch. Um, just kind of verifying we can sell everything off. We can. You're not going to make, you know, a whole lot of money on it, but I don't know that that would be the, the goal. But all of these placeables are able to be sold and removed. So you can also sell the house. You can sell the, even sell the tractor decoration. You can sell the plow decoration. And you can even sell the paperwork location if you need. So I thought that was kind of a nice touch on their part. So the outdoor wood boiler, also able to be removed. And obviously the large greenhouse and the small storage shed. So all of this can be sold if you'd like. All right, back in the truck. Just continue on down here. So we've got... Um, a little bit of a road that heads off that way. I don't think we want to go that way. Let me take a look. Alright, so looking at the map, that road basically gives us access to field four. So if you own that field, you'll head up through that copse of trees and then get back to your field. And here is field five. You can also see we've got, you know, some fencing, some barbed wire fence along the the lines there, so certainly crucial. So here's an entrance to field five to get your equipment in and work on it. And then a little bit of hills to the left there. Just kind of taking a look as when I see stuff on the topo map. Just trying to understand what we've got available to us. But again, now we're kind of really down in the valley. Pretty nice view there of some of the production buildings across the way. Another way, another road to get in. Yeah, we don't have a fence on this side, so you could get in here to get to field five as well. Right, and that'll just take us over. You can get to the you know, cereal mill and so forth. So, you know, again, definitely some challenging terrain, depending on what you were trying to do if you were to buy that area south of the road. Uh, not something you're going to easily turn into farm field. Uh, you 
Definitely have to do some terraforming there. All right, so we're coming up on the Muddy Gap, the first named location on the map. Let's see uh, if we can tell what gives it its name. Maybe that's maybe that's just the name of the little town. Maybe it's called Muddy Gap. So we've got the gas station here. Again, uh, I'm sure works very similarly to if we pull up, we'll get the ability to, uh, it's not letting us. Of course, maybe I haven't used enough gas, I don't know. But there's the main road, so we've got some traffic here for sure. And then farm three is right here. You can see the for sale sign. So just take a quick look. Uh, I believe it's this location, so you'd have the barn and the house. You know, so this is, is your space here. Although we don't have a field with it. Let's just take a quick look where we're at here. So yeah, we're there. Um, yeah, so it kind of heads up that way, kind of pointing the wrong way here. It's really up, I guess, this way. And then up and around. So this is your land if you buy Farm 3. So once again, you've got some space here to plow out a field if you'd like. It loops around, and, you know, I think you've got a little bit of this space here, so it looks just like an empty, an empty area to work. Some old barns across the way. All right, and that's the edge of the map, so you can kind of tell that it does end there. There's a little bit of of stuff there. So log trucks will be entering the highway is what we have on the field on the sign there. So now we're gonna head up this way which is what's gonna get us to some of the unique areas in this corner of the map like the mine, the burn ridge, and so forth. So once again depending on what style of gameplay you're looking to do you know, it, as you said, you can pretty much do whatever you'd like. So this is the road that comes across that entered from Field 5 on the other side, just to give you some perspective. So we're kind of on the other side of the valley that we have here. Sorry about that. Almost made myself a little dizzy. Probably not very pleasant to watch. But, you know, we've got a mountain rising up there. We'll be heading up that way shortly, I believe. So here's Bighorn Lake. It looks like we've got a road that heads up there. Pretty nice lake. Not quite sure, you know, if you bought that land other than just having a beautiful lake and not sure what else you could do with it. Alright, so we're going to head up this way on the rough road, as it tells us. So this will take us around the other side of the lake, but we're also not quite climbing yet, but you can see as we go on the topo map We've definitely got some elevation coming, if it really honors that, which it appears to be. So now we can see the lake down below us. Quite nice. Yeah, we've got a potential rock slide area, so a little bit of a warning there. But this is kind of the north end of the lake. Can't really see it down there. But definitely a very scenic map. Alright, 
so this is going to get us to the clear cut ridge here the bighorn mine is over there i'm just trying to figure out how i potentially get in there because yeah this is i think just the river coming through that we're crossing over looks like it's a little bit dry maybe you know it's not not time yet to Maybe a little too late in the season in August. Sometimes there just isn't a lot of flow, but I'm sure in the winter when things melt, that might be a, a pretty, pretty busy place. So here is the clear cut area. So as you can see, a lot of, a lot of stuff being exactly that clear cut and this road kind of goes around and takes it around but you know if you're looking to set up a logging camp not a bad spot all right so with the larger scale of this map i'm kind of going to hop around at this point because there's just a lot of driving we're doing so i've left the clear cut area and off to that space is the burn ridge which we can see uh, you know, definitely we'll t take a peek up there a little bit more. We're obviously going to hit the corner of it here, according to how the map is divided. But here is the mine. So if you want to take a look and you want to do the mining, um, you know, again, those buildings will be somewhat usable. But if we head on over this way, you can see, you know, we've got ourselves a pretty big pit here. You know, kind of what you'd expect to see in a mine. So you can drive around, get yourself around there, and then I think you're able to dig various things out. And then I think you bring them up here. Yeah, it says uh, gold. Pretty clear, gold mining equipment. So, you just take your fill out, bring it up, and look for gold. But yeah, we'll just head on over here, walk over. But yeah, I, I don't know if you need terraforming to work with that, but this is the Bighorn Mine, and definitely an area for you to explore. So I just got out here, this is a little bit north of the mine, but just wanted to kind of give you the perspective. You can see we're close to the border of the map, but just the way this is done, just really, really well done. So I've driven a little of the way here into the burn ridge. Um, you know, just obviously trying to model out a forest fire type of area where all the brush has been grown up blown uh, burned off and obviously the trees and so forth um, i've been to yellowstone and, and been through the giant burn area they had there some of the hiking trails uh, were reopened a few years after all that happened uh, you know just well modeled for sure um, and once again, I would think you could, uh, you know, clear those out. You know, it'd be a pretty steep field to work, but not something you couldn't do. So, another option for you there on the map. All right, so you can see the area we're at on the map. We've got a bit of a fire tower here, so I'm going to see if I can climb to the top of that and see what we see. Alright, so if you've played the Elm Creek map on uh, Farming Simulator, the tower should be familiar, but this gorgeous view certainly is not. Um, so yeah, this is a moved over tower. There's our truck. That's where we came in, but 
you know, just a gorgeous, gorgeous view of, of the local area. All right, so I'm heading along down the back road. This is up on the northeast side of the map. We're heading over to Route 242, but it's kind of the back country area. Again, all these areas are purchasable. So if you felt you wanted to do something out here in the woods, amongst the the mountains, uh, there are spaces here for you to do things. That's for certain. Looks like we're at the top here. Um, I do love how you know they've modeled this along with the topo map. I mean, we're, we're that clearly would have been the the top portion, and now we're headed back down. So just really well done on how this is all integrated and and designed and yeah we see this large flat space and that's what we've got so can't imagine the time this took to build um, you know they did say in their description tons of hours uh, I can I can absolutely see it so there's the little creek bed over there to the right. And yeah, I'll, we'll pull up to Hatchet Lake and we'll see what that looks like. So just a beautiful, beautiful little mountain lake. Um, wow. I love it. It just, it's so well done. I mean, having hiked in places like this and, um, it's just perfect. They did a really good job of, um, of pulling this together. So, got a really, really nice bridge here. Just a terrific waterfall below us. Uh, mist coming up from the water pouring down there. And you can hear it a little bit. Just was curious once I turned my motor off if there was water sound. There absolutely is. Okay, so we're coming up on 242, which is the main route through this area. So, yeah, this appears to be the only road on the map that has some traffic. I believe this is, okay, Wyoming Grain, which was listed on the map. So, you know, and as you might expect, kind of the main road is a little bit through the valley, as opposed to having some challenges out on the slopes of the mountains and so forth. Alright, so coming up here on the left is another farm, Farm 5, that we can use for purchase if we'd like. So, again, we can see the for sale sign. This one looks maybe a little more built out, but maybe not. Looks like it's got a windmill as well. So let's take a look. Got a barn, a house, a little bit of a shed. Silos around back here. So, once again, some ability to work. Alright, so just taking a peek at the map here. This is Farm 5. We're obviously in this space. So off to the east of us, we own all that land at the edge of the map, and then across the road, up a bit. So basically, yeah, over that way. So let me hop out here. So yeah, that space, if we go up to the fence here, basically a little bit of that across the road where that hill is, but then more importantly, pretty much everything that we have 
in this direction and got quite a bit of plane. I'm going to head out that way just so you can kind of get a, get a feel for it. But um, if there's anything that had a bit of like a cattle ranch or something feel, um, yeah, you could do some stuff with this. This is a nice piece of land. Um, because again, you own, I think, all of this. Let me peek again here. Yeah, I guess it'll end here. Yeah, we're, the truck is right here, so yeah, a long way to to that. And then obviously, as you're coming here, it gets a little bit more difficult but this actually isn't terrible terrain I mean this is this is usable um, I'm just I'm just blown away I don't I don't know what else to say because I'm gonna go up this way um, I'm gonna be careful because I might oh there we go the wall has appeared but until we get there that is just an awesome you know kind of blending if you want to call it that I mean does that not look that you could just drive to the mountain base from where you're at even here uh, just terrifically done so I think this fence line might be the southern edge but you know you can buy that piece of land across the way but I'm gonna head down this road and this basically is gonna take us to the south side of the map and into these high plains I really wanna see what that looks like so nice little church out here a road heading off that way but again entrances with the cattle grates to all of these spaces Right, so up there on the ridge to the right on the other side of the river is the gravel pit. So you can see there, once again, I'm sure that is something you could go and dig. And we've got another high pass bridge here, just gorgeous. But yeah, this is the debris crusher here. So this is kind of the southern edge of the map, the high plains here, but also just absolutely land that you could do some really interesting rolling farmland with. And we're coming up, uh, Liberty Peak is there in the you know, in that direction that we're looking at. So yeah, we've moved over. This is really kind of the center of the map, and that's Liberty Peak. From the topographical map, that appears to be the highest mountain on the map that we have here. But yeah, you could set yourself up here. Like, yeah, you can own all the land there, all the way south, a huge piece. And then there's a, a border here somewhere where there are two parcels of land back there and, he, and here. Not sure exactly where we're lined up. But I'm thinking this is a little bit, you know, it might not be that large because the parcels are 67 and 63 acres. But I was going to say maybe a little bit deceiving on that may be a monstrous field. But even if you plowed all 66 acres, and I don't know that you could, um, if I was got that giant boulder in the middle, that ain't going anywhere. But, um,. Could be real interesting. All right, so I've gone a little further down the road. This is clearly much flatter if you're looking for a space where you've got the mountain view, but you don't want to deal with um, the significant terrain differences. This looks like a piece of land you could call home. Now again, there's no farm space per se right here that lets you work with this 
but I'm basically going around the edges of the map. You can see the white down below in the mini-map, so we are down now in the southwest corner. We're coming up on where the train goes to Cheyenne. But yeah, this is a beautiful piece of property if you're just looking for some flat things that aren't amongst all those fields that are already there and you want to carve your own space out of the Wyoming landscape. So yeah, I just took a look at the mini-map. This parcel is one parcel surrounded by road. Almost 200 acres, 194 acres, three-quarter of a million dollars. Uh, so definitely if you're looking to be the Wyoming cattle rancher, um, that'll get you there. But once again, like we're right at the edge. They clearly have trees set up. You know, it kind of keeps putting that little wall in there, so can't quite see through it once we get there. But there's the rail line coming in. And uh, we'll head up that way and then head toward town. So you can see the train. Here it comes. Running out. Heading into town. Very, very nice. So, a little bit of a flickering issue there, but, you know, that's all right. So here is the sawmill. Uh, once again, having some experience with the logging industry and so forth. Very well laid out. Very nicely done. Definitely the giant piles of logs would be what one would expect. Right, so through the trees there, we've got the biomass heating plant. So that's where you can deliver some items as well. And now we're heading into town. So I did go ahead and look, because as I've been driving this map, I just had to know, is this a real place? Now, it doesn't look like he modeled it exactly like that, because there is not a Wyoming 242 that goes through there. That's the fairgrounds, Wyoming state flag with the buffalo on it. Awesome, really nice, whoop. Too excited, sorry, I'm sightseeing. <coughs> so, um, so yes, the town does exist. Oh, that's interesting, Clearwater, Wyoming. Because I looked up Elk Mountain but maybe now I need to look up Clearwater and see if 242 go, does go through there. But near Elk Mountain, Elk Mountain itself is 191 people. So it is a little, little town. This is impressive. I, I like how this is laid out and... Wow, this just, this feels really, really nice. You know, and then a little bit of a grid, and next level archery. I like that. Certainly something that I'm not surprised to see in Wyoming. Right, so there is no clear water Wyoming. There also does not appear to be a 242 anywhere in Wyoming, so... Totally fictional, which is perfectly fine. Because, man certainly doesn't feel that way. Um, it's pretty good imagination or creation of this thing, uh, the way it sits. So here are some of the other fields, field 9, field 10 out there on the horizon. All right, so the last farm, you can see the for sale sign here as we pull in. This is what's labeled on the map as farm 4. And this is on the banks of the Elk River, similar to our layout. So, pretty large barn structure again. And this is the one where you actually own field 2 as well. So this field of corn could be yours. So it is... Um, 
106000 for this parcel, but if you sold the other one, if you started with new farmer mode and sold the other one, um, which is close to 100000 you'd have enough. You'd have to move all your equipment here, which is a bit of a ways because it's the other side of the valley and the river. Because, yeah, you really can't actually see anything, but Field 1, our farm, is across the way over there. So, this is literally right across the river, but this is another one of the starting areas over here by this bridge. So, back home here, having driven around the entire map, hopefully you've enjoyed that in-depth driving tour, but this map is just too gloriously beautiful to not take time and just absorb all its nooks and crannies. Um, so the last piece, and where we'll end this, is down here. So this is our, our land, and again, this is all ours too, so you can create a second field or extend uh, this field, although obviously you've got that irrigation piece of equipment you'd have to figure out some way to to remove, but um, so across the way those through the trees actually is is farm two but there's that bridge we were standing on the riverbank just a moment ago and uh, looks like there's soybeans in the field here but you know there could be worse places to call home that's for sure but you know that kinda wraps us up um, yeah, not not even going to do a flying tour on this map. I just, I mean, I, I think you get the general idea, and we've been everywhere uh, in this video as long enough as it is. Um, if you're really dying to see this thing from the air, you can load up power tools yourself and fly around. But, um, yeah, I can't say enough about this map. I mean, after having gone through it, I mean, this is honestly, you know, hitting the would I play this. This is the first map I've reviewed in FS22 that as I've been doing this, I've like had pangs or a desire of like, I would just love to spend hours and hours on, like I, I could think of so many things to do here. I mean, down on the the high plains, um, I'm not a logger, so you know, I wouldn't be, but I mean, just the setup, if you love logging, um, just the views and the vistas and stuff that you get to do it in. Um, you know, the the one thing I guess I would say that would have been nice is, is having a farm, one of the starting farms down on that High Plains area, because if you want to start down there, you're truly starting with nothing. I mean, the other ones at least give you some buildings if you buy the land. So, uh, but again, in a, in a game, in a sim, that's less of a a barrier obviously you need to get yourself some money and if you're trying to be honest about it yeah it's going to take you a little bit of time but you know maybe what you do is just you start out here in new farmer mode work a few years here have a few really good harvests um, make some money and find a way to trade the spot and, and move on down there. You know, I don't know, but there's so many things you could do, and you know, certainly part of it is I, I love this kind of area of the country, the wilderness. Um, on FS19, I spent a long, long time on the Great Smoky Mountains map because uh, it was really the only map that had any kind of feel of mountains, but it was nothing to this level. I mean, that this is just an incredible piece of work for giving the feel of the mountains. And that's really what was kind of calling to me as like, especially like after I had visited Hatchet Lake and you're out there, uh, you know, and just kind of going back to those times where I'd hike down to a lake like that, um, you know, up in Idaho or Wyoming or something like that. And it just felt the same way, but you're in a, you're in a sim, you're in a game. It's crazy. So I mean, just hats off to Elk Mountain Modding on capturing that feel and really 
building the map in such a way that uh, that someone who's been in areas like this, like this just feels like you're here and that you get to actually play in that space. So uh, absolutely I would, I would play on this map. If time was no object, um, I'd be starting this thing tomorrow. I haven't shown of course play works with the map, but there's so few fields I'm pretty sure it does and the bigger issue would be does it work with your created fields, but you'd have to try that out. Alright, so if I pick field one, you can tell it outlines the field correctly. And very quickly, if I generate the coursework, you can see it's gone ahead and done that. So once again, field two, ten. This one's the most tricky, I guess. Let's generate the course there, see what it does. So again, while maybe not pretty, not perfect, um, it even knows about the island and went around that. So I'd say that's pretty solid. The rest of these fields are very basic shapes, so no reason to test. It's just more are the borders set up in a way that you're going to be able to operate, and they absolutely are. I would have been dumbfounded if that was not the case, given the thoroughness and the attention to detail on this map for everything else. So course play will absolutely work on this map. All I can say is uh, download this thing, enjoy yourself on it. Um, if you like this kind of space and uh, looking for something to play out in the western United States, uh, this is not something that is often created. I, I've, there weren't a ton of maps in you know alpine regions per se in the u.s that i have seen, come across before uh, and certainly none to this level of stunning detail so you know follow the link again um, i'll make sure the link i provide is one that generate creates a file uh, the one that i eventually found that has both the buildings and the map in one um, so, but if you go to other sites, it's available in many places. Just make sure that you're getting both the building pack and the map. So you might have to do some digging to do that. But hope you've enjoyed this tour. As always, um, any comments, questions down below, I'll be happy to answer. And I'll see you next time.